Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I thought I'd talk with you about workflow and uh, how to save time. Over the last couple of years, I've learned many things uh, from, from you know watching other people and, and uh, uh, how to become more efficient. And one of the things I learned was setting up a session template. Um, pretty much this, you know, there, there's a number of things that you do all the time uh, when you record um, and mix. So over time, I thought about what those things were, and I, and I created a session template that I can open up when I start a new project, and basically everything I need has already been configured. Rather than having to go through and build it every single time, uh, you basically set up a, a song file in your DAW, and you set up um, the tracks and groupings, effects, etc., the way you feel it needs to be set up for you. Uh, hopefully this video will give you some ideas on how to do that. So let's let's take a look at it. I'm using um, Persona Studio One here, but this will work in any DAW. Uh, basically, I've got, if you look on the left-hand side here, I've got some groupings. I've got drums and bass, which is basically my rhythm section. So I have a reference track, which I always use. Um, addictive drums, um, which I always use. And generally, I use this kit for the music, but sometimes that might change. But I have that set up with the... The modifications that I like, and then I have my uh, my bass track here. Sometimes I'll do multiple bass tracks. I'll do a dry and a sans amp, and I'll just add one in. It's pretty easy, but uh, most times I just record one. So um, this is you know pretty convenient for the rhythm section. Then I have a separate section set up uh, for guitars. Um, you can see there I've got two two left and right acoustic and three different electric guitars. And I've got a keyboard section and a vocal section with uh, two lead vocal tracks and backing vocal tracks. And basically, that's pretty much it. And Studio One's nice because it allows you to have these folders so you can just you know, basically put stuff in there. It's kind of cool. So that's the kind of the grouping that I do. And if you look down here on the console, um, I've got all my tracks set up for individual um, drum instruments from kick, snare, hi-hat, toms, um, the overhead and the room all going into a bus and then I also have let me just open this up here I also have a um, a side chain channel set up for the snare which I always do I always use this pretty much always use this compressor sometimes I change but you know this is the one I normally use and then I have a kick bass side chain bus set up and I use that same compressor with generally the configuration that I use but I'll obviously tweak this for every every different mix but that way it's set up um, then I've got uh, acoustic my acoustic guitar two two acoustics going to the bus you notice I don't have anything set up here because you know I'll, I'll use different things like sometimes I'll use um, make it real uh, simple and just use like a uh, uh, like a, a compressor and sometimes I use like isotope alloy you know I'll basically put that on here um, to um, which is by the way a really cool plugin. If you haven't seen this, you should probably check it out. It's basically all a channel strip, all in one channel strip: equalizer, transient, exciter, two pr compressors, a deesser, and a limiter. Um, but I digress. So I'll, I'll probably do another video on that, or you can find videos on that. This is really a cool plugin. Anyway, um, generally. You know, I'm, I may do simplistic or, you know, sometimes I'll get more fancy. So I leave these kind of blank and I just, you know, paint what I need. Um, and then I have my, um, you know, what I do is I, I basically put everything, all the instruments into one bus. I call it all bus. And I pretty much do that every time. And what I'll do here is I'll use this EQ generally to carve out a little bit of mid-range for the vocal. Um, usually it's about like that, but it really depends on the vocal. Usually it's about like right about uh, a one and a half to two K, and then just you know fan it out by about 0.5. Um, generally that's what I do, but you know some like I said sometimes it's uh, uh, it depends on really the song. Uh, but I have got I do have everything going into all the instruments going into this all bus uh, bus channel. If this way this way when I'm doing like um, Staging for mastering, I can you know bring down all the instruments together on one bus, which is kind of cool, and I can bring out bring down the vocals on two buses. I have I have my lead 
uh, vocals on one bus and my background vocals on another bus. So that just makes things real simple. There's only three things I need to bring down when I want to bring the gains down to get it ready for mastering. Okay. Um, then I've got my effects um, channels here, and I've got basically a reverb for drums, guitar verb, uh, a room general reverb for other um, accessories, an open ear, which is a separate, different type of reverb that Studio One has, analog delay, and beat delay. You notice I don't have anything for vocals. That's because I use um, another isotope product called Nectar, which is a really cool product. And Nectar has reverb built in. So I just basically use this reverb pretty much exclusively. By the way, this is another really cool product, uh, a plugin for specifically for processing vocals, which you might want to just check out. I'll probably do another video on that at some point. So I don't waste the cycles, um, Studio One cycles on reverb. I use the reverb that's in Nectar. Uh, so that's basically how I have it laid out. And then on my, um, my main bus, I've got... I usually use a Sonic Maximizer uh, just to sweeten up and bring the mix out of the mud a little bit. So I have one on there. And this this setting will change from time to time, so I have it all at zero, uh, so I can you know play with it. And then I put an L2 on here um, from Waves, which is a pretty standard plugin at minus one ceiling. I'll leave it at zero threshold, so there's no compression. But when I want to do like sample. Um, uh, sample mix downs I'll you know bring the threshold up to like a volume level that would generally be about mastering volume level and uh, that way I can check it out and I can you know I bring it back down when I, when I go back to mixing so and then I have got got all my meters on this as well so I can check check out you know the metering stuff as I need to and that's pretty much it it's pretty simple but you know, as I said, by laying these all these things out, you know, I probably, you know, save 45 minutes to a half hour of, you know, little time setting up new tracks and doing all this stuff, uh, you know, basically doing it one time just, just, just makes it a lot easier. So that's uh, how I set up a session template. And as I said, as time goes on, you'll, you'll evolve this to the way you work. And what's really cool about it is, when you set this up, you remember to do things. Like I'll always, I always remember now to do uh, kick and bass side chain. I always remember to do a snare side chain, right? Uh, you you kind of remember to do stuff the way you have your 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 session template set up. So I hope this was helpful. Um, you, like I said, you can do this in any DAW, um, and then when you want to bring up a song, you just bring up the session template and you rename it to whatever uh, the new song is going to be, and that's the, that's the that's the file that you use. So again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please uh, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think of this. If you have any other ideas, stuff that you'd like to see. Uh, thanks for watching.